Hi, this is Sui778 coming at you, and today on the channel I've got yet another multimeter to present. Today's offering is the Homely Life HT126A Smart Digital Multimeter. Uh, this was kindly provided by Homely Life, and I want to say thanks to Claire uh, from Homely Life for sending this out for us to review. And uh, this is available at Amazon for $37.99. Plus, there is a 15% off coupon that is being offered for the release of this video. Now, I do not know how long this coupon is going to be in effect. So, what I would say is, if you're interested in this multimeter, uh, go to the link in the description and it will take you right to it. And the 15% coupon code will be available. You don't need a code or anything. It's just a regular Amazon coupon. So, let's go ahead and uh, get to the unboxing here. First, we're going to show you the box. It comes in a pretty plain Jane box. Nothing, uh, nothing fantastic about it, as you can see uh, right here. Homely Life. Um, I think they designated this as the HOM0142. Uh, anyway, but let's take a look and see what we get inside. Comes with a nice case. Hard shell case. Let me get this out of the way. And inside we get uh, a manual. Small manual, but the letters on this are actually fairly good size. I'm going to show you the uh, specifications real quick. There are some specs for you. And on to the next page. You got a couple pages of these. There's the next page for you. And I think we have yet some more specs on the following page. Yep. Here are some more. Hopefully I didn't skip any of these. This is kind of a little itty bitty manual. There you go. And I think that's it. Yes indeed. Okay, so you get the manual. Uh, you get thermal couple, set of leads, and a pair of AAA batteries. And last but not least, you get the meter, if I can get it out of here. There we go. So there it is in all her glory, the HT126A. Let me get this set up and we will uh, do a run through. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here is uh, give you a size comparison with the Kuwait's HT112B. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, this is a little bit taller and uh, a little bit wider. Looks like you can actually set that inside there. Uh, the thickness is uh, significantly higher on this. As you can see, this is the HT126A, this is the HT112B, good bit skinnier. I would say this is probably, I would still call it cell phone style, but maybe a little bit thicker than average. So anyway, there you go. There's the HT112B comparison for you. Okay, and here we go with a rundown of this unit. And I apologize, this is the HT126B as in Bravo, not the HT126A that I called it in the intro. Apologize for that. Anyway, uh, let's go from top to bottom here. Uh, up at the top here, we do have three LED lights. Uh, these first two are green. This one on the far right is red. Uh, this will indicate continuity in the middle light, I believe. And this also doubles as a strength meter for non-contact voltage readings. You will also see them in the main display, but also up here, which is kind of handy. Uh, down below, of course, we've got uh, the main screen here. Uh, we've got a power button, a select, and a flashlight button. Uh, your freeze frame hold and your manual function navigation. Now the cool thing about this manual function navigation is you can go in both directions, you're not stuck with one, and it will round robin either way you go. So that simulates something uh, that would be similar to a fully manual multimeter such as this one. As you can see, you can turn this pretty much any way you want. Anyway, 
So it simulates that and I find that rather handy. Okay, down below, uh, here's the thing that really makes this meter stick out to me right off the bat, is we have the input jacks on the face of the unit. That is a very welcome sight to my eyes. It makes this thing a lot easier to work with, a lot easier to stand up because this unit does not have a stand. But anyway, you have your common jack, your input jack, what they're calling it, this is basically for, you know, continuity, resistance, capacitance, etc., etc., etc. However, this is a little bit different than most three jack meters as this is not the milliamp input. Um, all your current input is going to go on this jack here, and you will see that later. Uh, this is a true RMS multimeter, 6,000 counts. Uh, the maximum on the uh, current input is 10 amps at 250 volts, and they are claiming that is a 600 volt category 3 multimeter. I'm more inclined to think that it's probably a category 2, 250 volt. We'll find out a little bit more about that once we open it up. So let's go ahead and turn this on. You just need to press down and hold this red button has a nice beep and as you can see it defaults to smart mode and uh, this smart mode basically is like any other uh, multimeter it will toggle between voltage resistance and continuity and to get into uh, manual readings you just hit these two buttons as as I said um, it will you can go either direction with this and as you can also see it go in an auto and then it'll round robin this way and then you can do it the other way. Uh, also you notice that we have the safety jacks here uh, uh, you know with the lights uh, that's as you would find in a Kuwait's KM601 that I just reviewed or Kuwait's HT118A so same feature there. Another cool thing about these jacks or uh, the safety features is on the fuse, if the fuse is broken, it will, if you're in one of these uh, modes uh, that's, uh, you know, like voltage, continuity, whatever, it will give you a little icon, uh, like a little rectangular icon with a line in the middle that's broken, indicating that you've got a bad fuse. Now, if you are on the current input and the current function, it will spell out fuse in the display here basically telling you that you've got a bad fuse. So nice safety features for this. Let's go ahead and do a quick tour of this. As you can see, again, we already went through the, uh, the auto. But you got uh, AC and DC voltage. And we do have a dual display here, which in this mode it is displaying uh, temperature with uh, AC. I believe it shows, yeah, uh, frequency. Looks like you only get frequency and whole numbers here. Interesting, and it does indicate true RMS. Uh, next up is your resistance. Next up is continuity. Next up is diodes. Next up is capacitance. Next up is your frequency and duty cycle. You do get a decimal on the duty cycle here and a three on the frequency, so that's handy. Um, Next up is your temperature readings, and as you can see, uh, this is set up like, I don't think you can toggle between these. No, you can't. It's just like the KM601A. You can read it either in Celsius or Fahrenheit, so that's fine with me. Next up is your current input, and as you can see, it tells you about the leads. So yet another safety feature, and it tells you, of course, which ones to connect down here as you see the flashy green lights. And last but not least, non-contact voltage and live. And uh, just uh, forgot to mention, on the current, in, uh, current input, you can run either AC or DC. So no problem there. And last but not least, as you can see, this is a very nice looking four color EBTN display. Uh, very similar to the KM601A, except over here, I don't know if the camera is showing it or not, but it's kind of a light greenish color. And then you get a yellow and then a white, and then uh, the smaller uh, indicators here are dark blue. 
So yeah, beautiful display, have no complaints about it. Okay, well let's go ahead and uh, open this up and let's see what, uh, what's going on inside. Okay, so let's uh, break this down. Now basically to put in the batteries, we're gonna have to take the cover off. This is pretty typical. And yeah, actually there is a flashlight here and yes, it does work. I'll turn that on real quick just to show you. Just hit the flashlight button and there you go. All right, so let me turn that off. Let's take this apart. Uh, basically, this is a, feels like a synthetic cover. This is probably going to go flying out of my hand, so don't be surprised. But basically, to get to the battery compartment, we got to take it off. And that actually came out a lot easier. Yeah, just your synthetic, typical synthetic cover. Uh, on the back here, uh, we've got a single screw. This is a panel that covers it up. So let's take that out. and then you can just dump it right out, no problem there. As you can see, this does take four AAA batteries, and that's a good thing considering that this has that uh, pretty vibrant four color display. Uh, we also have a, uh, a brass insert here for the, uh, for the battery cover, so that's nice. And then of course, to take it down the rest of the way, we've got screws in all four corners, here, 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 and here. So let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Do the takedown here. It's a little bit small, so it's a little bit uh, fiddly to play with, but uh, let's go ahead and take it apart. Okay, there we go. So you get these four screws out, and then uh, after that, we're going to get, need to get a little guitar pick out, so let me get that out here real quick. And you're going to need to slide it again. This is just like the KM601A on the, on the takedown, although it looks like it's already trying to come out here. So that looks fairly easy. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's coming right out. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, easy. Okay, cool. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's take a look at this here. Uh, nothing really special uh, about the cover. It's got a separate uh, battery cover, which, you know, or a container, compartment, whatever you want to call it. The contacts are right here, obviously, where my finger is, uh, thumb is pointing. Uh, it's always good to see that instead of it just sitting there on the board. And let's see. Uh, pretty basic design underneath here. Um, but let me go ahead and reset this up, and we'll, we'll do a uh, we'll do a close up of this and take a look at the PCB. Okay, and here we go with the PCB close up. Well, as you can see, we uh, right off the bat we have uh, the split variety of uh, jacks. Those are just fine. Um, looks like we have a single PTC right here. Uh, looks like it is tied into a little melt resistor there, and a couple of other smaller ones. Um, Looks like, uh, as was the case with the KM601, we do have a resistor uh, functioning as a current shunt. Uh, the battery contacts are here. We've got another cluster of what looks like uh, resistors up top here. Uh, a single fuse. It is a small fuse. Now this is a 10 amp fuse and it is rated at 250 volts. I'm not sure that's even in there all the way. It's not. I'm glad I checked that. <laughs> okay. But anyway, so um, here is your processor right here. It is blobbed out, so we, I can't tell you what it is. Relay is right here. We've got some capacitors up here. Uh, yeah, a bunch of capacitors. It looks like maybe a couple of uh, transistors, maybe. it's pre They're pretty small. It's hard for me to see them. Some more resistors and stuff like that. You got the crystal right here. Uh, you got the LED for the flashlight right here. Here's your speaker, and this appears to be the uh, the processor for the uh, that driver for the LCD display. Got some more resistors and diodes, and maybe a few capacitors up here. Like I said, this is really small, and I'm kind of squinting to have to see this. Now this is the HT126A version 1.2. Uh, I am not seeing 
a manufacture date on this. That's interesting. And I see something handwritten up here, and I'm trying to figure out what that says. Hmm. Just says, looks like it says A11 or something like that. Okay. So my guess is, is that this is a fairly new design. Now, if anybody has seen one of these before, please let me know. Uh, there is no manufacturer date on here that I can see, or it is stamped on the other side, and I'm not going to go on to the other side. But anyway, very simple design here. As you can see, uh, the reason why you have to use the current jack for everything is because this only has one fuse that is tied to the current jack. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and put this thing back together, and let's get some tests done. Okay, a couple of other things real quick before we get to the testing. Number one, this meter does have an auto power off function. Uh, basically, it's set up to where uh, it will shut itself down after 15 minutes of activity. The nice thing about that is, is if you're using it, it's not going to turn off on you. Some of the older meters I had would just turn off on you no matter what. Uh, you can also defeat this feature to just leave it on all the time. You have to do it at power up every time. You basically just hit the power button and the select button here at the same time and that will do the trick and disable it. But you will have to do that every time you power it up. Okay and one last thing to do we're gonna de-virginize this sucker so let's go ahead and peel the covering off of the display and there she is. Beautiful, shiny real shiny. Don't want you guys to see my ugly mug in this. Okay, so we've got this all ready to go, so let's get to the testing. Okay, here we go with the DMM Check Plus test. We're going to start off with uh, DC voltage, and I am running this in manual mode. We're not going to test this in auto. So here we go. This uh, this should be 5.0000 volts, and the HT126B is picking up as 5.002. Very good. Okay, let's go to uh, AC voltage. This should be 4.999, and we are getting 4.973. So again, very very close. In fact, that was slightly better than the KM601A or KM601 rather. Nice. Okay, and we are getting a frequency there. It is showing it as a whole number. So let's go ahead and switch up to the Hertz and duty cycle and see what we get. And we are getting a duty cycle of 49.9% and frequency is 100.0. Uh, to the best of this scale, it is reading that correctly. Probably should have rounded it up to 50%, but I'll give that a pass just fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Let's go to uh, resistance. Okay, so uh, this first one should be 99.990 ohms. Let's see what we get here. And it is reading it as 100.1 ohms. Okay, pretty good. Next up, we should be getting 1.0005 kilo ohms. And we are getting. 1.000 kilo ohms, so pretty darn close. All right. Next up, we have 10.0044 kilo ohms. This should round it up, I think, to 10.01. Actually, it shouldn't round it up. So let's see what it does. And we are getting 10.00 uh, kilo ohms. So perfect there for its scale. So very good. Okay, and last but not least, we have the 100.064 kilo ohm resistor in here. So this should read it as 100.1 kilo ohms, and it is. So very, very nice on resistance. No complaints there at all. All right, let's go over to capacitance. Okay. First up, we're going to get uh, the 992 picofarad. And let's see what we get here. And it is reading it as 1.003 nanofarad. So yeah, not too far off. Uh, that's pretty decent, I would say. All right. 
Next up is 10.07 nanofarads. Uh, this uh, multimeter, by the way, does not have a rel feature, so we can't rel anything out. And, okay, and it is reading it as 10.1 nanofarads, so again, very close. It's supposed to be 10.07, so that's good. All right, next up we have 100.6 nanofarads is what it should be. And we are getting 100.2 nanofarads. So again, very, very close. No complaints there. Last but not least, this is the hard one. Uh, this should be 1.007 microfarads. And let's see what we get on this. I'm pretty sure this uh, samples at 100 kilohertz. And it does, because we're getting 1.027 microfarads and that's pretty that, that's pretty much in line with all my other regular multimeters including this bench meter here so just fine there all right last but not least we need to do the current so let me repatch and while we're doing that let's see if this is going to actually switch over to the correct mode let's see what it does here and look at that, jumped right over to a milliamp range, okay? Now, like I said, um, one thing I do want to say before we get started here, as you can see, the uh, milliamp range, you only get one decibel. Same is true for uh, millivolts. That is one minor drawback of this, is that, yes, it will measure millivolts and milliamps. You do not get microamps, period. So let's go ahead and uh, try that on DC first. And what we should be getting here is uh, point, 0 0.9996. So this should basically just round it up to 1.0. That's what we should be getting here. So let's see what happens. And 1.0. I would say that's pretty good, pretty accurate. A shame it uh, only has that one decimal. It is wavering a little bit, but yeah, I'll give that a pass. Okay, actually I don't need to put that on. Let's switch it over to uh, AC. This should be 1.001 milliamps. It is reading it as 1.1 milliamp. Let me make sure I've got it in AC. Curiously, I am not getting a frequency on this. Okay, uh, still though, uh, fairly respectable. All right, and that'll do it for the, uh, the, D, uh, the DMM Check Plus test. Well, let's move on to the next thing. Okay, here we go with the 8584M DC voltage test. We're gonna start off uh, with 2.5 volts. And as always, I've got uh, my reference meter, the Unity UT8804N patched in for reference. So let's go ahead and do this. Start off with 2.5 volts. Let's see what happens here. Okay, and getting our customary 2.5006007 007 on the Unity, and uh, the HD126B is displaying it pretty close. 25, 2.501 and 2.502 wavering there a little bit, but I'll give that a pass. That's pretty good. All right, next up is 5 volts. Uh, getting our customary 5.005556 on the reference meter and 5.008 on the 126B. Looks good. 7.5 volts. Getting the regular 7.502 on the reference meter and uh, the HT126B is displaying it correctly as 7.50 volts. Okay, good. Let's go to uh, 10 volts. Again, getting our usual 10006, probably a waiver up to 10007 on the reference meter, and uh, should probably read as 10.01 on the uh, on HT126B, but again, that's very close. No complaints there. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, set up the uh, 32 volt. Go ahead and patch it into the 32 volt and see what we get on my power supply. Okay, there we 
we go. Sorry about that. And uh, like I said, I just turned this on, so this will read a little bit low. I'm going to let it sit here for just a second, but for all intents and purposes, <coughs> I would say that this thing is pretty much right on. Yep, it's round, it rounded up right at the right point. So yeah, 32 volts, looking good here. It's wavering a little bit, but again, yep, very, very good on voltage. Okay, here we go with the continuity test uh, with the stock leads. Now these did have some oily crap on them, so I'm gonna, I, I did wipe them down a little bit. Didn't use any cleaning solution, just wiped them down real quick just to see how we, uh, how we do. So let's go ahead and try this. We're gonna do this in auto mode first. Yeah, it actually zeroes out, so that's good. Kind of slow on reactivity. Yeah, auto mode continuity is not that reactive. Let's try putting it into manual mode and try that again. Okay, here is manual mode. Oh yeah, a lot faster. Yeah, considerably better. I would definitely wash these, uh, clean these uh, leads off with either 90% alcohol or um, denatured alcohol, something like that. Okay, let's go ahead and move over to the um, to the probe masters here. Okay, here we go with the probe masters. Uh, same conditions. Uh, we're going to start off in auto mode. Again, very slow reacting, but they zero out immediately. Let's see if they do it, do it, do it on the second pass. Yep. And again, pretty slow. All right, let's put it in manual. Just the manual continuity. Oh yeah, much faster. Zeroes out. Not the fastest in the world, but you know what? It's fine. It's usable. All right, so it uh, looks pretty good there. All right, so let's go ahead and go through the rest of these tests. So let me get my, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some resistance. I'm just going to use my box here. So let's put this uh, into manual mode. And basically the, uh, the lesson learned there, like I said in the previous video, you're just better off, uh, you know, putting it, um, you know, you're just you're just better off uh, doing continuity and really everything else in manual mode. I mean, it's gonna it just auto mode just slows things down. Th this is the second meter in a row that I've tested for this and got the same results. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do some uh, resistance measurements here. Now we should have a little bit of onboard here. And yeah, that's showing 0.2 ohms, so that's the usual on board. Cannot rail this out, unfortunately, so we're just going to work our way up. So here's 1 ohm. Okay, that's right on. you got to remember, we got to count that extra 2. 10 ohm. That's about right for that one. Yep, okay, here's 100 ohm. 100.1, yep, looks good. 1K, again. Very, very good. 10K. Yep, just about right again. 100K. Looks good. 1 meg. Yep, pretty much right on. 2 meg. Yep, right on the money. Here's 4. And that's right on the money. Okay, let's go to 10. Nice and fast, too. And I read that pretty fast as well. Okay, yep, that's reading uh, that uh, 10 mega ohm right where it should be, just a little bit under. And here's 11. This should also be just under 11. And yeah, it is, pretty much. Yep, settling just under 11. So looks great on resistance. No complaints whatsoever. All right. Okay, next up is continuity test. We're going to start at 100 picofarads on the substitution box. So let's see how this goes. Okay, 
And it is reading it as 120 nanofarad or picofarad, so a little bit high. 150, a little bit high. It's fairly close, so it's not bad. 220. Yeah, it's just about, again, slightly high. 330. Yeah, it's about right on there. Should be actually a little bit low, but that's good. 470 should be... Yeah, that's about right. 560 should be about 540. Yep, it is reading it low, so that's fine. 680 should be about 6... 64, 640, 650, a little bit high, but that's fine. 820, this should be right at about 780. Yeah, it's reading at 787, no problem. Um, one nanofarad, yep, that looks good. 1.5 is a little bit low as I expected. 2.2 should be right on, pretty much. And it is, yeah, slightly high, but that's normally how that reads. This should be around 3.08 nanofarads, and yeah, it's reading it as 3.11, so that's fine. Let's go to the high side. 4.7, slightly high, that's good. 5.6 should be a little bit low, and it is. 6.8 should be about 6.4, and yeah, actually reading a little bit lower, but that's fine. Uh, 0.82 should be 8.0, and we got 8.05. Okay, here's 10 nanofarads. Yep, that's right on. 15 should be a little bit low, I think. Actually, a little bit high, I'm sorry. Uh, yep, that's about right. 22 should be basically right on. It is. 33 should be a little high, and it is. 47 should be more like 49, and it is. 56 should be about 54, and it is. 68 should be about 64, and it is, and 100 picofarads, this usually gets between 102, 103. Right on 103, yeah, no problem there. All right, so it looks good there. Let me get the test board in, we'll do some bigger ones, a few of them. Okay, here we go. Just going to do a few of these. Uh, actually, you know what? I want to do the 22 puff here. I want to see if that's actually if it'll actually take. So let's let's try that and see. Ah, look at that. Reddit is 26 picofarads on a 22. I'll take that. That's nice. That's something the KO, KM601 couldn't do. Okay, here's one uh, microfarad. A little bit slow. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, here we go with 10 microfarads. Again, a little bit slow. That's yeah, about right. All right, let's go to uh, 47. This should be more like 44-ish. see what we get here. Yeah, that's just about right. Okay, here's 100 microfarads. Get slower as we go up. Actually, I don't think I had to head it in the right hole there. Come on, there we go. That was my fault. Yep, that's just about right. Okay, let's go to one uh, one thousand microfarads. Okay, I think I got them in there. This should read around 940, 950. Yep, that's just about right. Okay, 2200 microfarads, and this should be, this should read around 2.1 millifarads, roughly. Yeah, we're good there. I'll take that. And then the big, big, big one, this should be around 9.5 to 9.75 millifarads. So let's find out what we do here. Yeah, we're right, yeah, right uh, where it needs to be. So yeah, this thing is really good on capacitance. I have no complaints whatsoever. Okay, so uh, moving on, let's go ahead and go to the diodes. Let's go ahead and start with the lights. So here we go with the readings here. 
Okay, you get red. It's reading. Okay, that's good. Yellow with reading, so we're good there. As you can see, it blinked, so this is cycling like uh, others do. Green with the reading, so we're good there. Blue, yeah, just fine. And white, yep, just fine. And for the RGB, we get red with the reading, green with the reading, and blue with the reading. So yeah, flying colors there, no problem. Looks good. And the drop voltage look good as well. Okay. Um, here we go with the uh, rectifier on the regular diodes. If I could get it in there. Yep, dot five six two. That looks good. No continuity beep appears. Okay. Fast recovering. Okay, dot five twenty three. Looks good. Shocking. Yep, looks good. Switching. Uh, dot six twenty four. Yep, that looks good. And germanium. I'm sorry, I'm at a really bad angle here, folks. That's why you see me kind of struggling a little bit. Okay, dot two ninety looks good. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pay attention to this meter right here. We're going to check uh, the output voltage here. I suspect this is going to be pretty healthy. And we are getting, well, it would stay in there. 3.9304 volts, looks good. And as you can see, no, it didn't cycle there. I thought it would. Yeah, it's actually holding steady. Oh, yep, there it went. Okay. So just like any other uh, cell phone style meter uh, does cycle, which means uh, your LEDs are going to blink on and off. It looks pretty good there. Okay. So uh, overall, uh, on the you know on all these uh, basic measurement tests, uh, everything's looking pretty cool. I'm uh, I'm very uh, very impressed. Okay. Got a few more tests to do, so we're going to need to reset for that. So we'll be right back. Okay, here we go with the Fernersi SG003A uh, DC current test. We're going to start off at uh, 4 milliamps and work our way up. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And it is reading it as 4.0 volts. So to the best of its scale, it's wavering just a tiny, tiny bit. I just did turn this on, but yeah, it looks like it's settling at 4 like it should. Okay, so we're good there. Let's go up 7. And it is reading it as 7 volts. It's probably more like about 7.01, 7.02, but in this scale, that's accurate. Okay, let's go to 10. Should read it as 10.0, basically. And it is. Okay, looks good there. Let's go to 15. Should read it as 15, even though, although it's really more like 15.03, but again, we don't have the scale for it. We've only got the one decimal. Eh, it's wavering just a tiny, tiny bit, but yeah, it looks like it's smoothing out at about 15, 15.1. Okay, pretty good there. Let's go up to the full 20. This should read it as 20.0, basically. Might waver up a little bit because it looks like it's been behaving that way. Yep, going up and down a little bit. Probably would have helped if I let this warm up a little bit, but again, this is reading it right where it should be, so no problems here. Okay, here we go with the AC outlet voltage test. So let me uh, switch this little power bar on. Let's get this into uh, AC. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and jam the probes in here and see what we get. Tonight we are getting 122.5 volts with a 60 uh, hertz on the duty cycle. Let's go ahead and check uh, check the uh, hertz and duty cycle on the dedicated setting while we're at it. 
60.00 even and 49.9% on the uh, duty cycle. Yep, 60 even on the frequency. We're good there. And as you can see here, I haven't pointed it out. And the reason I haven't pointed it out is because uh, this bar meter just follows the numbers. There's nothing special about it. Okay, here we go with the live test. Uh, of course, we only need the, uh, the red lead plugged in. So let's go ahead and test this outlet. Okay, and as you can see there, we get a dual display on the, uh, the signal strength. We'll also see this with the NCV uh, in the display, and then, of course, the green and red lights up above. I kind of like that feature. That makes it, uh, you can actually read it from two ways. All right, let's take this out. Let's go ahead and try the, uh, the non-contact voltage. So let's put it in that mode. All right, here we go. Yep, see that? Uh, let me get it in the picture there. So you're getting two, uh, two displays, you know, two bar meters, and actually the, the red at the top is actually a nice little feature. I like this, but this seems to be pretty sensitive. Let me go ahead and stick it up, up overhead. Yeah, same deal. So N NCV on this is fine, and the live seems to be working fine. So here we go with the thermal probe test. Let me get these plugged in here real quick. Okay, let me get that sticking out the way I want it. Okay, so let's get that into that mode. Okay, so 70, it's reading as 74 degrees and, you know, just hold it just like that. Reading is uh, 75 degrees. My overhead is saying 72. That's a little bit off. It's not bad. Let's go ahead and give it the body heat test. Reacted pretty quickly. It should get to the low 90s here with me, around 93, 94. Made it to 90. It doesn't look like it wants to go any further than that. Yeah, it's okay. Not great, but not terrible either. All right, let's go ahead and do the fire test. Yeah, I'd say we're pretty good there. I set the crank on fire. How about that? Okay, well anyway, it does appear to work. Uh, it is reactive. I didn't quite see how high it went, but I'm, uh, it reacted pretty quickly there. Okay, here we go with the frequency test. Now, according to the Homely Life manual, the HT126B actually has a range of 6 hertz up to 10 megahertz. So we're going to run our usual sine wave here uh, with a 2.5 volt amplitude, as always. And uh, we're going to start at 1 hertz, and we'll see what this thing can do. So here we go. Okay, it's 1 hertz. And it is showing it as 1 hertz. Uh, corrected itself on the duty cycle there a little bit. Uh, yeah, looks good. All right, let's turn that up to 10 hertz. Okay, looks good there. Seems to be adjusting a little bit. Okay, let's go to 100 hertz. Okay, I'd say looking pretty good there. Okay, here's 1K. Looks good there. All right. Looks like it's taking it a while to pick up the duty cycle, but that's okay. All right, here's 10K. Looks good there. 100K. Looks good there. All right. Okay, let's go to one meg here, if I can put my fingers to work. There's one megahertz. And it's reading it as point, well, basically 999 kilohertz. That's fine. All right, let's go to five meg. Looks pretty good there. D cycle is sagging a little bit, but not bad. Yep. All right, let's go to 10. This is its rated spec, and it is picking it up as 9.99 megahertz. All right, let's keep going. Let's try 15. Reads that. All right, let's go to 20. And it looks like we're losing it. Okay. All right, let's try... Uh, Bumping the amplitude up to 5 volts. Let's see if it'll pick it back up. And it 
does not. Okay, so let's try, let's see how high we can get it to go. So we we'll go to 16 here. Okay, it's getting that. 17 gets that. 18 gets that. 19 gets that. Okay. 19.5. Yep. Okay, looks like uh, its upper limit is 19 megahertz, but that's 9 megahertz above spec, and it measures all the way down to 1 hertz, so I would say looks pretty good here on the frequency. Okay, and now on to the pros of the Homely Life HT126B Digital Smart Multimeter. Very good accuracy on all measurements, save maybe the thermal probes. They were slightly off, but again, I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, has good count resolution, 6,000 counts. Uh, another thing that I really like is the round robin bi-directional function selectors, these two buttons right here. You can go in any direction on these. You're not stuck with uh, one direction, and it'll round robin either way. So I like that. It's a nice touch. Uh, easy to use. Uh, really didn't have to look at the manual that much, mainly just to figure out what the specs were for the frequency range, you know, when I was measuring frequency. Other than that, didn't really have to do anything with that. It's a small manual, but it is legible and well written. Uh, didn't see anything in there that was terribly confusing, and the letters aren't so tiny that you have to squint to read them. And the display. Well, I tell you what. This is an excellent always-on EBTN display. It is the best one that I have reviewed. Uh, it even tops the, uh, the KM601A that I reviewed before it for the only reason that it has four colors instead of just three. This is a really nice, pleasant display. Very few washout angles. Absolutely no complaints there. It looks fantastic. The built-in jack safety features are nice, and the fact that it also has an added... Uh, a fuse warning system to it where it'll give you a little icon if you're not running current. If you're in current mode, you'll just see a big fuse right across uh, the main display here. So that's a nice touch. And you also get the flashy green lights down below as found in some of the Kuwaits and other brands. So that's a nice touch. Good for beginners. The input jacks are on the face of the unit like you get with a conventional meter. And I cannot stress this enough. It's about time that somebody came out with this kind of design. This makes this cell phone style a little bit thicker, but it's definitely worth it because you can do a lot more with a meter that you're plugging Jackson into the front that does not have a stand. I mean, you can prop it up, you know. I I just tried propping it up with the without the little stand that I use and it wasn't that hard to get up, get it to stand up. So I'm hoping this is a new trend that we see in more and more of these style multimeters because those bottom connectors, I hate them. <laughs> so great touch there. And it comes with a nice case. It's not the most robust case or anything like that, but the fact that you get a case in a package of something like this that has a bit of a hard shell in it to protect it, that's always handy to have. You don't have to go looking for anything. Okay, uh, on to the cons. There are a few, uh, but not many. Uh, first up, uh, on the higher value capacitance readings, a little bit slow. That's pretty typical for uh, multimeters in this price range, so I'm not going to knock it too much. I would consider that to be a minor complaint. My biggest complaint is next, no stand. Again, I'm waiting for the day that I find a stand on one of these things, because it certainly can be done. Maybe one of these days my wishes will be granted. But not this time. But this was definitely a step in the right direction with the jacks. Auto function slows down performance, especially on continuity, and I've noticed this in all smart multimeters. When you're in auto mode, you're simply just not going to get the reactivity that you would get in manual mode. And that doesn't just include continuity, your resistance readings are going to be a little bit slower, and so are your voltage readings. It's just the way it is. So for optimum performance, just run it in manual function mode. No microamp range. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is the second meter in a row of this style that seems to have done with done away with microamp range. A little bit disappointed by that. That makes it a little bit limited for certain people uh, on an electronics bench who need that kind of precision and that kind of uh, measurement range. 
So that's a little bit of a bummer. And I have one wish for this one. One item on the wish list. This does read microamps and, or I'm sorry, this does read milliamps and millivolts, but you only get one decimal. Most other meters will, you know, move the decimal around, like say if you're reading, say, two milli milliamps, well, you will get 2.000. On this one, you only get 2.0. So on the next model, add some of that de decimal resolution into it. That would probably help. Uh, it takes a little bit away from the precision. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a real big deal for a lot of people, but if you have to be really precise about things like that, then yeah, that might be a problem. So that's just a wish. Okay, so that brings me to the conclusion on this multimeter. I was very pleasantly surprised by the Homely Life HT126B. It is a very solid overall compact meter with a gorgeous EBTN display. I love the display on this. It's the best display I've seen on a meter, $50 and below, bar none. This would be suitable for use on an electronics bench, unless, of course, you need microamp range. That could be a problem, and is definitely a very good choice as an all-purpose household meter. Uh, definitely would be a perfect meter for around-the-house kind of usage. I mean, it does everything, pretty much. It has front-facing jacks, which make this unit easier to work with than the average cell phone-style meter. And it also offers the same safety features found in the Kuwait's KM601 and others with the green flashy lights indicating which jacks the leads need to be plugged into. And on top of that, it also gives you a warning when your fuse is out. So that's also a nice touch. I like that a lot. And overall, the HT126B is a very accurate meter across the board. And I definitely recommend this thing and I definitely give it a thumbs up. I really like this meter a lot and again I was very pleasantly surprised by it. It definitely exceeded my expe expectations. So with that being said I do want to say thanks once again to Claire from Homely Life for providing this meter to the channel for review and testing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Until the next time this is Sui778 and we'll say good night.